Hey guys, thanks for clicking in. This right here is the stupidest thing I've ever seen. Or, oh, I apologize, the dumbest thing I've ever seen was one of the quotes that I got. So since this is so dumb, let's explain a little bit of stupidity. This was used to teach a curveball, but let's go back to the curveball. How we actually throw a curveball, not talking about the grip, but the release. Our fingers have to be on top of the ball. Here, my fingers are on the side of the ball. Here, they're on the top of the ball. If we throw it, if we look at it as a clock, 12 o'clock, 6 o'clock, my fingers are at 12, my thumb is at 6. As I turn the clock this way, this would be, you know, so-called, on my view that I have through the phone, is an 11 o'clock, 5 o'clock. The ideal curveball that we want to throw is we want to get our fingers on top and we want to reach so that the ball comes out and has a late and sharp break. So for years, guys, people have been trying to teach that curveball by going blah, 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 blah. I'm a feel guy. I like to try to get the players to feel it. So originally we learned with the Orioles and the Padres is we would take a cylinder, cylinder around the house. It doesn't matter. You would take that cylinder and you would throw it out. So you would come in here, you would play catch, and you would get here. You would get on top 12-6, and you would throw that cylinder out. And what you would look for is that 12 o'clock spin straight over top. That's what cylinders teach you to do. You can see the motion better because here I can't see it on a baseball. But you can get immediate eye feedback if you see the can spinning this way. Good job. You're on top. If it's spinning this way, not so good job. You're not on top of the ball. Get on top. So this is kind of cool to work with, but it's a pain in the ass to put in your bag. The lid comes off all the time when you're playing catch. So stupidity thought, hmm, I'm in Lowe's. I found something that's a cylinder. And at the bottom of that cylinder is where I take my grip. Cylinder. Hey, let's just, hey, why, don't we, why don't we make this one here? Add a little weight to it, right? A weighted ball, curveball gun. Nah, that ain't gonna work. Hell with weighted balls. Sorry, but that's just an opinion. I want to get here and reach. It's the same thing, guys. Take away this. Now I have a cylinder, and I'm going to look for it spinning this way, the same as I described with the wasp repellent. The cool thing about this, besides watching it spin the correct way that I learned, is with younger kids, when I'm starting to teach it, Remember I said you get on top and you release out in front. I get a lot of them getting out of here and trying, trying to get on top, first of all, trying to get on top over here, which is hard because you're not out in front. So to really feel that out in front and release it here, which you're not actually releasing it here, but this is where you feel like you're releasing it, is I can look down the scope of this and I can get my target right there. So this helps two things, guys. One, it helps you read the spin. And when it starts flying out there, you yell to the kid, scope it. And they move the arm slot over to the right spot. So that is the purpose of the CB gun or any cylinder at all. So this is the dumbest thing I've ever seen. Sometimes you got to play the fool to fool the wise. Keep sharing ideas, guys. That's how us as coaches learn. That's what I love to do. So thanks a lot. Nuke out.